Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's good to see you here on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. You know, it seemed like in the past a lot of the Easter, Easter Sunday mornings would be rain, snow, cold, and all that. We've got a beautiful Sunday. There, there is not one reason that I can think of that a person ought to, ought, ought not to be in church to worship God today. I mean, it's just, it's just a, a beautiful time. So, let us go to the Lord in prayer we begin. God, again, we thank you, God, for this beautiful day. We thank you, God, for, for what we celebrate today. We thank you, God, for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God, again, this morning, we've come to worship you in your word. We ask God today that the Holy Ghost would come and be our teacher. God, this word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish what you will today. In Jesus' name, and amen. You know... <clears throat> We, we are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, today. But you know, there was far more that, we, that most people don't talk about that happened during this week time for us. You know, In Psalms 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know? But there's one of the most important benefits that are, is not listed in that. Uh, particular chapter in that particular psalm because it had not yet been given and that's the gift of the Holy Ghost you know? and, and you know so many people that I've heard preach about that the resurrection and the crucifixion they, they miss it they all, they all tell you that whenever the veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom that gives, it gives us access into God. Well, that's not right. It gives God access into us. See, the Spirit of God rested in the Holy of Holies. Yeah. But when, when that veil was rent, and now remember, this, this veil was not like a bed sheet. This was a very large piece of cloth. It weighed hundreds of pounds. So it had to be supernatural that that thing was rent from the top to the bottom. You know. But, you know, Paul tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, he said, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Well, the, in the New Testament, in the Greek, there are two words for temple. One means the physical building. The other means the Holy of Holies. And what Paul is saying here, our bodies is the Holy of Holies, the place where the Spirit of the living God rests now. So, you know, surely if people realize uh, that how precious our bodies are to God, surely we'd make, our behavior would change. You would, you know, you, you're not going to put trash out in front of the living God. And what do we do with our bodies? A lot, not most people that are, that are truly born again, they know better and, and they behave themselves. But a lot of people say, "Well, I'm saved." They just go ahead and do this and that, whatever they feel like. But if if you if you really realize that your body is the temple, the dwelling place of the Spirit of the living God, surely. You're going to behave yourself. Yeah. But see, that, that, the coming of the Spirit to, to us, that's one of the greatest gifts, folks, that we can have on this earth because he will lead you, he will guide you, he will teach you. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just thankful, you know, for the, for the Spirit of the living God. You know, because he will, he'll keep you out of trouble if you're alive. And if you do get into trouble, he'll convict you till you can repent. You know, I mean, people say they've been born again and they just keep on in, in whatever sin that they're into and, they, and it never seems to bother them. I question whether they've ever known the living God or not. 
because that is one thing. You know, to a Jew, the sign of true uh, <clears throat> salvation is a change in behavior. Let's get into our lesson today. We've got a good lesson today. Uh, we're in 1 John chapter 2 today, beginning at verse 1. John says, My little children, these things write I unto you that ye shall sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. <clears throat> the word advocate there means an intercessor or a counselor. Uh, it, Hebrews uh, uh, 7. Hebrews 7, 24 and 5. That's it. Paul says it. But this man, because he continueth ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Now he's talking about Jesus. Wherefore he is able also to save, that word means to be to, to be delivered, to protect, or to heal, to the uttermost, that means entire, that come unto God by him, seeing he liveth to make intercession for them. I lose all my papers sometimes. See, Jesus lives to make intercession for us before the Father. Yeah. But notice there, he said, he starts out, my little children. Now, that don't mean that's just his physical children. This is his spiritual children. Remember now, at this time, John is, a, is an old man. And so he has been preaching the gospel ever since Jesus Christ ascended back to the Father. And so he, he has uh, had many converts in, in his ministry. So he... He is writing to them. And as I said last week, John is, is having the same problem that Peter had with false prophets, the false teachers that are telling the people, you know, Jesus Christ was not the Son of God. Or, you know, in today's world, we don't have that, that big a problem anymore. What we have a problem with today is People say, well, the Bible says such and such, and you don't have to do that, or this is not going to happen, and all that kind of stuff. But they, they don't realize they're still denying Jesus Christ. When you deny the Word, you deny Jesus. Because he, because he, he is the Word. In verse 2, he said, And he is the perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also the sin of the whole world. Now, the word perpetuation, the ampl I like the way the Amplified uh, states it. He was the anointing sacrifice. See, as I've said so many times, Jesus Christ came not only to be the sacrifice for our sins, but he came to be our example. You know. You know but he said he came to be the sins for the whole world. And I, as I was studying this recently, I was thinking about the, the message that uh, Pastor uh, brought. It's been a couple of years. My, my time gets away from me. I don't remember how many years ago. You remember the, the, the message that he brought? Had the tomb up here? You know? Well, I, I think Pastor was totally right in the way he preached it. A lot of people don't agree with him. Everywhere you see a tomb, they say, well, the tomb is empty. No, that tomb was full and overflowing because Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that he, he took uh, the sins of the world upon himself. Well, they had to go somewhere. He didn't come out of that tomb with all the sins of the world. He had to leave them in there, you know. And, and, and as you see the, the way the things are going today, I don't think the tomb would hold them. There's so much good corruption in the world today. You know, but but I, that's that's one message that I, I probably never forget because you know it really brought home the point of, of 
what happened there. Verse 3 said, he said, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. That little word if right there is going to get a lot of people. Because I don't find a lot of people today, it, I'm talking about what people call themselves church people. I do not find a whole lot of people that are doing what this book tells us to do. You know, you know this doctrine, I, and I can't, get, I can't get away from it, but this doctrine that once you're saved, you're always saved, I can't back that up in this word. Because, in other words, he said, basically, if I don't keep the commandments of God, then John said, I don't know him. Yeah. Let's go to Matthew seven twenty one. This is Jesus speaking here. Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. I can't get away from that. That's what he said. You know. But, uh, but let, let me see if I can find it right quick. Uh, in Matthew 5 and 20. Listen to what Jesus had to say there. He said, For I say unto you, that exceed, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, the Pharisees, they were the most, what we would say, the most religious people of that day. Well, what about today? You know, the book of Ecclesiastes says the things that has been will be. I mean, things don't change. It just goes, it just turns over maybe in a little different color in, in another generation. You know, and it just goes from one to the other. You know, you know, it, you know even Paul told us that things would wax worse and worse as time goes on. And it has. You know. But there's coming a day that Jesus Christ is going to come and, and destroy all this unrighteousness. But I, I thank God I don't want to be here when that happens. Because if, if you'll read the Revelation, it's going to be some hard times, folks. And it's just as though, as we have, have a country saying, it's just around the corner. It's coming. When you, when you study this book and what, what the Bible tells us is going to be in the latter days, just about everything that's in here has come to pass or is in, in progress come to pass. Listen to verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not any. Well, what, what did John say? over in Revelations 21, 8. He said, all liars have their part in the lake of fire. Folks, this is hard. I mean, Jesus and Paul, in his letter, they plainly told us, let no man deceive you. There's no reason that anybody on the face of this earth can be, should be deceived because we all have the same word. But people, as I've told you so many times, people, especially in our area, would rather take the word of a man than the word of God. You're all right. You know everything. You've been saved. You're all right. You don't have to do nothing else. Yeah. But that's not what this book tells us. 
And and <clears throat> the Bible tells us that one day this book is going to be opened and I'm going to be judged for what I've done according to this book. Yeah. Five. But whosoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected hereby know we that we are in him. So if you want to know that, that you're in Christ, keep the word. Do what he tells you. You know, it's, see, it is so so easy for us if we will do what he says. Even if we have problems, we can have peace. Look at the world today. Have you ever seen a time that there's as much disruption in the world? Just this past week, I mean, it seemed like Everything's turned upside down, it, you know. But if you're in Christ, that ain't going to bother you because you're not looking for this kingdom. You're looking for that kingdom. It, you know, Jesus said that these religious people one day will kill you and think they're got doing God a service. No, in one sense, they're doing you a service because they're putting you in the presence of the Most High God. Because Paul said... To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You know, I mean, it, it, as we might say, I know if we look at it in that, through their natural eye, it looks so bad. But if you look through it in the spiritual eye, it couldn't be no better. You've got a, you have got a hope that these other people don't have. Six, he that says, he that said he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. As I said, Jesus Christ came to be our example. We need to walk as Jesus Christ walked. How many of us <clears throat> today, if we were treated like Jesus Christ was treated at his trial, how, how, how many of us could say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do? No. Most of us said, get them. I'll get even with them some way, somehow. That's a lot of our way we... But <clears throat> forgiveness is a trait of Jesus Christ. People, the people, These people that hold grudges from years and years, they don't realize it. They're not in him. I don't care what they say. <coughs> yeah. You know, I, I like this saying. You know, unforgiveness is like taking poison and hoping the other person dies. You know, because it is a, why you're, as the saying is, while you're steaming in your juices, they're out there having a good time. You know, but unforgiveness, it's for me. And that's it. I'm like, I'm like you, Doc. I learned it the hard way. You know, you know all your troubles and your trials are, are not for nothing. If you'll learn from your troubles and trials, then you won't have to go through them again. You know. Verse 7 said, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is, is the word which we have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment 
I write unto you which things is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. <clears throat> John especially, uh, he refers to Jesus Christ and to God as the light. And it is a light, because if you're in if you're in Christ, you see things a whole lot different than other people see. Them. You know, they, like I said, they see this whole world thing as really something bad. But we know, based upon the scriptures, that it, it is the precursor to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and to our deliverance. It's not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. No. But it, it, the devil wants to take as many to hell with him as he can. And it's my choice where I, who am I going to believe? Am I going to believe God or am I going to believe him? Yeah. Yeah. You know, God, God will never force nothing upon you, but the devil will. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people say, well, all this, <clears throat> all this sickness and everything, that's all from God. No. Uh, James said, all good and perfect gifts comes down from the Father of light. So, therefore, I, I have never seen sickness being a good gift. <clears throat> so it has to come from, from, from the devil verse, verse 9 he that saith that he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now uh, that word hateth in the Greek means to detest or to love less I don't care what somebody is doing to us, we still need to love that person because you're never going to change a person through hate. You know, all you're going to do is make them worse. For those that watch it, Sister Dodge talking about the, the woman at the well. You know, well, the Pharisees at that point, the religious people would have said, stone her. You know, that's, what, that's what religion will do. You ain't keeping my rules and regulations. We don't want you. Stone them. Throw them out. Throw them out. Jesus, Jesus loved that woman. And it made a difference in her life. And contrary to a lot of people's thinking, he made an evangelist out of her. She went and told what he had done to her. Yeah. Verse 10 said, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. The word occasion in the Greek means a trap stick or a snare. See, <clears throat> that's what hate does for you. It, it, it's, a, it's a trap. You get into it, <clears throat> and what, when you get into hate, then that you don't have the love of God. And when you don't have the love of God, you can't understand the the scriptures as you ought. You know, you know the reason why most of the people of our, our community don't receive what God has for them is because they have got a preconceived idea of what God ought to do. 
See, that's the very same trap that the Jews fell in. That's the reason why that they could not see Jesus as the Messiah. They had a preconceived idea of what, when he came, what he was going to do. And he came as a babe, and he came riding in on a donkey. You know, well, that can't be the right, that can't be the right one. He's supposed to come riding in on a white horse and deliver us. But they, they had a preconceived idea. They didn't know that he, would, he came because the Bible says, you know, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. He came to, to shed his blood for us. Yes, in humility. See, the world thinks that the strong person, you know, the one that's got the, got the, the club in his hand, so to speak, they're the strong person. But in, in God's kingdom, the humble is the one that's got the power. See, people don't understand it. God's kingdom's upside down from the world kingdom. You know, Jesus said, give and it shall be given to you. The world tells you you better stick it in your pocket and keep it for yourself. Eleven said, But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. You know, <clears throat> You know, Paul, Paul speaking in 2 Corinthians, there, he talked about the lost. He said they can't receive the, the, the truth because the God of this world has blinded them. And, and, and sad to say, the God of this world has blinded a whole lot of the church world today. You know, I, I don't know why this came to mind to me this week, but this has been many, many years ago. I went to a local revival one night, <clears throat> and <clears throat> if you remember, Doc, the way it used to be, there'd usually be about two rows of preachers sitting in the front. Well, it ain't that way now. I mean, you, you'd do well if you have, a, have two extra. But anyway, there's a whole group of preachers standing on the outside of the church, and one of them asked this question. said, you think a devil could preach a man? Boy, I wish I knew then what I know now. I could have told that old boy a thing or two. Because if you, when, you, when you're not preaching what this says, this word, the devil's the one doing the preaching. See? People don't understand. There's only two places things can come from, from God or the devil. Verse 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven, you are forgiven you for his name's sake. See, God forgives us for his name's sake so we can be a light to somebody else. You know, if I'm acting like the world, how am I going to change anybody else? How are they going to want what I got? You know. No, that's the thing about so many people today. All this corruption is going on, but they don't know where to turn because the the church has turned too much like the world. Yeah, yeah. Pastor and I were talking here the other night. You know, a lot of these churches are, are using the things of this world to get a crowd. You know. Well. When the things of this world is gone, what, what, what have they got? Nothing. So they go right back out. You know, they're like Peter was. You know, when Jesus was crucified, what did Peter do? I go up fishing. He went right back to what he was doing. And and the, and the people in the world in the church, they, if they don't have something, some stability here, they'll go right back where they was at. No. Well, you know, it's like 
It's like the, the, these Bible schools that they have in the summertime. I always said, you know, if you get a kid with a hot dog, you'll have to keep him with a hot dog. Because when the hot dog's gone, he's gone. Thirteen said, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him, that is, from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him, that is, from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you and you have overcome the wicked one. <clears throat> what John is doing here, he is writing to these people to stir up their remembrance. And see, that's what we need. I know I, I, forget, I forget scriptures from time to time, but it's good to reread them or, or to go to a study or, or, or to church or whatever, and it brings it back to your remembrance. And so that's what John is doing to these people. He is encouraging them. If there's ever been a time that the people of the church needs encouragement, it's now. You know, so our time's up for the day. So we'll pick up God willing on verse 15 next week.